There's deer in my yard. What's up everyone, it's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. Welcome back to your MySQL tutorial series. This video we are going to discuss primary keys. And we've had some primary key information kind of sprinkled throughout the series, but we never actually devoted an entire video or two to just primary keys. I think this is going to be useful because it's going to take all those chunks and kind of piece them together so you can get the big picture of primary keys. So let's discuss primary keys. What are they? A primary key allows us to uniquely talk about an individual entity or a row. So imagine we have a table and we just have, you know, millions upon millions of rows. And we want to talk about a very specific row, one row out of millions. How do we do that? Well, the primary key makes this very simple because it allows every single row to have a unique identifier or an ID. An ID is essentially a number that's generated by the database. It doesn't mean anything in the real world, but it allows us to uniquely talk about a specific row. So imagine you're walking down the road and some guy comes up to you and he's like, bro, can you give me information on the user in your users table for your database? Because, you know, databases are forgetting data. So this, this is a potentially real situation in the future. And you're like, wait, which user are you talking about? And he starts describing him. He's like, oh yeah, his, he created his account somewhere in January or July or January or February. <laughs> and he's a premium member and you know, all these criteria. And essentially what you do is you start searching through your table and getting rid of anything that doesn't match that criteria. So you get rid of all the users that didn't create an account in January or February. You get rid of the ones that don't meet any of the other criteria. But you're still left with like, a couple hundred users and you can't talk about that individual user because you can't define that individual user. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if that guy came up to you and he was like, Psh, give me some information on the user with the user ID of 3072. And then you'd be like, oh, okay, well this username has this and this and this. It allows you to uniquely identify that user. That's just one example. You can use IDs for other types of tables. It's not always a user table. Almost every table you work with is going to have an ID. And if it doesn't have an ID, it's going to have something to uniquely define it. The ID is known as a surrogate key. That is different than a natural key. A natural key is actually used for something. So it could have came up to you and said, hey, give me information on the user with the username of whatever the username is. And as long as that username is unique, it would work. So what do we need in order for a primary key to work the way it's supposed to work? Obviously it has to be unique, like I just said. So the data has to be unique. In addition to this, it has to be not null. That means every single row has to have a value. Finally, the data should never change. Now these two are pretty easy to enforce with MySQL because these are constraints. You can literally just say unique right after the column definition when we're creating a table. Same with not null. Unfortunately, the whole concept of the thing never changing is not quite as easy. In order to help the data never change, it's helpful to use either an ID or a natural key that is not likely to change. For example, an ID will never change because why would it? The only use is for the database. There's not going to be a situation where the user asks to change their user ID. That's because they don't even know what their user ID is. A username could be a natural key and that might be a good one to use because the chances are you could restrict users from changing their username and they'll be fine with that. That would work as a natural key and it probably will never change. So it's pretty simple to think of a natural key for a user table, but when we start creating other tables, it might get kind of complex and complicated trying to figure out what do we need to force every single row to be unique. That's why I think more people are moving towards surrogate keys. I think they're more commonly used because they're just easier to work with. That's because these three things are automatically very easy to get. These two can be easily enforced and the data changing is not likely. Now when you actually insert data into your table and you have a primary key that is an ID, every single row is going to have a different value. So we might have one, two, three, four, and you might get annoyed with having to figure out what's the next number. Fortunately, MySQL has a very easy way to figure this out and get this to work. And that's by labeling that column as auto increment. 
Kind of ran out of room here, but that's okay. <laughs> I think actually that's where I'm going to start talking about in the next video. That's just because I don't want this video to run too long and bombard you with too much information. So be sure to check out the next video where I'll discuss auto increment and a couple of other things. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.